It is time for another instalment of our Kiwi in Paris. Susanna Harper, who has moved from, oh, the quiet life in North Canterbury uh, <laughs> to finishing her law studies in Gay Paris. And I use the term widely and broadly. And uh, from what I can see on the video link, Susanna is, well, where are you on the Champs Elysees or at some Cafe de Margot or somewhere? It looks very, very Parisian. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Yeah. Oh, great. Luckily, I'm in none of those places. Uh, I'm just downstairs from my building in my lovely little neighbourhood, um, having a wine with my Kiwi flatmates. So life is good. Right. Uh, I'm a happy lass. <laughs> good. Now, Susanna... The last couple of times we've talked, really, you've been loving it. But I'm just going to point this out, and I wondered when this was happening. You're still hanging with Kiwis. You've still got that thing that, despite the fact that you're overseas, you are still a Kiwi, and you're with people from your home country. Uh, one person. Uh, ah. I'm, with, I'm with one Kiwi. Um, the first time I had met a Kiwi over here was on Friday Friday night uh, on accident, but it was a real treat to hear the familiar, like, a Kiwi person to be able to say, you know, all of these ridiculous sayings that New Zealanders come out with and to not have everyone go, what? <laughs> what are you talking, talking about? about? Because it's not... Yeah. Oh, so it was a real treat to Kiwi the other day. Um, so it definitely, it's, it is the most amazing thing when you use Kiwis overseas. It's just like receiving a warm hug. Yeah. Uh, there you go. You see, you can take the girl out of New Zealand, but you can't take uh, New Zealand out of the girl. All right. Um, Susanna, Absolutely the other not. thing since, since we last spoke, there has been a fair bit happening in the world. Uh, certainly... If you are any sort of reporter in New Zealand, you've had a business class trip to London to stand in a queue uh, after the death of Her Majesty the Queen. And given the, the interesting history between France and Britain, I'm wondering how the passing of the sovereign in England went down with the French. Did they care or not? I mean, they get rid of their sovereigns in a rather more severe manner called the guillotine. Mm. Yes, and it's. I'm so glad you asked me this question because I actually travelled out to Versailles uh, last Sunday and it was just like nothing I've ever seen before. It's pretty neat. Just the regality. It is, it's incredible. But then also you can absolutely see why there was a revolution here um, at the time. But in terms of the passing of the British monarch, I think it's slightly a different story and I think that... Um, in, in Europe here, there's sort of a, a rivalry triangle and there always has been between the British, Germany and France. And despite the fact that, you know, everyone's friends at the table now, there's still this sort of underlying tension. And I notice even when um, people find out that, when people find out first, they ask if I'm English because um, obviously no New Zealanders really live here, so it's not an accent people are familiar with. But when people realise that I'm not British, their um, behaviour changes towards me. They're nicer to you. So some people go, oh, yes. I mean, some people have just outright said, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, it's interesting how that sort of tension has continued in some way. And I think that whilst they, everyone in France was well aware of things passing, um, it was on television. Same with the new leadership um, turnover um, for the Prime Minister's office. It's the same thing, everyone's aware of it, but it's almost like a, a, a purposeful avoidance to talk about it, almost to say, oh, well, we don't really care that much. But at the same time, I can't speak for, you know, in general terms. I can only speak to yeah. the people who I've... Who I've yeah, well, you are, around, in of course, so. studying international law. One would presume there was some, you know, awareness of events in the world amongst... Uh, the people, you know, your classmates and your lecturers? Well, we, I mean, the only thing I noticed at Sciences Po, which is a political science institute, is uh, there was just an email sent out to all of the um, 
all of the school saying, you know, thinking of our British and colonial, whatever, you know, um, people or students at the school. Uh, we're saddened to hear the news of the Queen's passing, all of that sort of thing. So yeah. just sort of a, a, cur- a courtesy email, if yeah. you will. <laughs> um, Susanna, look, my other question to you, the other story clearly that is ongoing, though has gone off the boil somewhat here, is the war in Ukraine. Um, we read reports that neighbouring countries to Ukraine and parts of Europe, Poland, for example, are very seriously concerned about the possibility of a limited or any type of nuclear war. Uh, France is a nuclear power. Um, yeah. Is that shared in, in in Paris? Is this a genuine concern amongst the person in the street in Europe? <sighs> On the one hand, I think that people here should be concerned about an energy crisis and with ongoing tensions um, in the Ukraine. However, I do have to acknowledge that, I mean, of course, Paris is a very, very distracting place um, and it's, it's very easy for people to be swept up in... in the magic that's happening around them um, and sort of feel slightly oblivious to what's actually happening in the rest of the world. So I'm a little bit um, concerned to see that once again, it's, uh, the war in Ukraine does seem to, to be another subject that is sort of like just business as usual. I think people know that we're going to have a bit of, um, bit of an energy crisis here um, coming up, especially in winter. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's it's sad enough to see there's a lot of, you know, of course it's a big city, there's a lot of homelessness um, here already. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what it does to the place and whether it'll actually take a little bit of that magic away because, of course, it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world, undoubtedly. Um, but it is just a, a hub of all the degrees of... Humanity. So, I mean, you've got you've got the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, um, and yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see if if the vibe changes a little bit here um, as we start to notice the tension during Ukraine increase. All right, that is great stuff. And an energy crisis, what means higher prices for energy or energy just not being available, Susanna? I think from what I've heard, it's A, going to be high, but B, also possibly, there has been some people talking about a curfew, as in at this time of night, everyone has to shut off their lights and has to... Whoa. So I, I've, heard, I've heard people talking about um, preventative measures like that, as in will there be a curfew, an electricity curfew? So, I mean, that's also interesting. So it is, it is looming. It is, it is on its way in the energy crisis, I do believe, yes. All right. Uh, Susanna, anything else that you're missing about home? Oh, of course. Miss everything. <laughs> you have to say But you that. won't be seeing me for a while, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Susanna, always lovely uh, talking to you. I'll leave you to enjoy your... Um, cafe glass of wine in Paris, you lucky old My thing. Bon Rouge. Okay, okay, your Von yes. Rouge. Life um, is hard. Life is life is very hard. <laughs> okay, au revoir for now. That is uh, Susanna Harper, our Kiwi in Paris. And really interesting to have someone in another part of the world giving us their take and their perspective. Interesting, isn't it? That, um, that rivalry, Germany, France, uh, Britain, it still exists. It goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, of course, and you know, what do you do if you want to upset a Frenchman? You call him a garlic-munching surrender monkey. Um, that is one of the insults the British people have, and all the, uh, there are all sorts of things going on. Um, the French, though, fiercely independent, fiercely nationalistic, and interesting to see, well, they were polite about the Queen dying, but not, not such a big deal. It's not like she had her um, head chopped off at the Bastille, was it?